Remember how I told you guys that I was going to be doing, uh, I was doing an interview with uh, New York Magazine? Well, it came out, it's a good interview overall, but not exactly the best title, especially considering AOC's recent vote uh, and my recent criticisms of AOC. So, you know, that's not, that's not great, but what are you, whatever, what are you going to do? Did they do one called... Did they do one of her called the XUC of politics? <laughs> That's funny. Streaming with the Sound Piker, the AOC of Twitch. I'm a political commentator with like fans. I don't like it whenever people put that. I don't personally enjoy whenever people uh, don't clean up the way I speak on interviews. That's like a pet peeve of mine, especially because like, yeah, I, I say like a lot. I say all that stuff a lot, but like when you put it in the fucking headline you're you're it's like kind of belittling uh and and silly but otherwise it, it's a good it's a good article i mean the person who wrote it luke uh is is a hasanabi head from what i understand like he definitely was in here he definitely has been in here for a very long time he's been in this community for a long time because um you know the questions that he asked were pretty good look on that picture though yeah i mean i guess Tom Piker was in a rage. A million tabs were pinched together like sardines at the top of his browser. His jittery cursor bounced between them, summoning network news, chirons, YouTube rants, viral tweets, and TikTok memes. Today's training topic, Piker, who was 30 years old, had purchased a 2.7 million house in West Hollywood. An ordinary Twitch streamer's housing wouldn't make headlines, but over the past five years, Piker has become one of the most prominent socialist pundits in America. The controversy about the purchase that made it to Fox News and Breitbart, and Piker was prepared to take on the interlopers who logged on to see the fireworks. The only reason my house is really expensive is because of the area I lived in, he growled. Are you guys really that stupid? As long as you don't defang your core values, as long as you're still speaking truth to power, then fuck them, Piker tells me three weeks later, recounting the drama as we sit in the living room of his nearby apartment rather than the five-bedroom, five-bathroom home he refused to apologize for buying. I don't give a shit. I'm doing this in the least exploitative way you functionally fucking can. The room is littered with bachelorish clutter, papers, books, and gaming gear are piled on every surface. It's my labor, he says, throwing up two middle fingers, painted with chip black polish. Did I do that? I don't remember that. Oh, I did. I was like, yeah, fuck those people. Uh, I'm, I'm the one who's streaming for 10 hours. Tiger is a Twitch streamer who spends every day in front of a camera speaking to his 1.5 million followers. But unlike most of the platform's top users who live stream themselves playing video games while shooting the breeze with their fans, Piker, username Ad Hasanabi, mostly talks politics. He trawls through Twitter and rows bad takes from career right-wing correspondents like Ben Shapiro and Tucker Carlson. He breaks down the hawkish New York Times op-ed lines, uh, op-eds line by line, steadily working himself into a frothy fury. It is free associative and open-ended. I have an accelerated version of brainworms, he says. I'm literally always online. I'm consuming media nonstop, which is owned by Amazon, and it provides no sorting category for civic commentary. Piker lists his broadcast under a section called Just Chatting. Tune into a Piker stream and watch him condemn the civilian death toll in Afghanistan. An hour later, he may move on to revisiting his favorite WWE feuds. Fans don't need to have studied Marx to understand where Piker is coming from. He looms over his streaming rig at six foot four, broad shouldered in a silver bla bracelet and paint speckled cowboy bebop shirt, gnashing a cud of nicotine gum against his molars. Yikes. That's a, that's a visceral image to be painting, but what are you going to do? It's true. On election night, from this same room, he hosted nearly 230,000 concurrent viewers, making him the sixth most watched election live stream across the internet. A month prior, he broadcast playing video game Among Us with representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar as a part of a voter registration push. Like those similarly alluring avatars of the left, Piker proposes not only ushering socialism closer to the center, but making it fashionable. For a long time in the Obama era, being a progressive meant that you listened to NPR podcasts and were constantly upset about not having enough representation in media. I, I, I meant like diversity, by the way. I didn't mean this like... Uh, um, like not having leftist representation in media. He later says, he says later adding, the left was always getting a bad rap. It was very successfully turned into a cartoonish depiction of a hysterical person, someone who doesn't see any joy in life. I want to show people that you can be a progressive and not be a total fucking scold. Tiger was born in New Jersey and grew up in Istanbul through, uh, thoroughly obsessed with American movies. That's why I don't have an accent, he says. His first, his first brush with punishment came in 2013 after he secured an internship with the Young Turks progressive news show co-created by his uncle jank uger three years later piker became the host of a short form video series the breakdown in which he developed both his nose for reality and the profanity he often deployed against his conservative media rivals Tommy lauren was a frequent target as was jordan peterson 
the videos were a hit, some topping out around 20 million views. Spiker became known, as BuzzFeed put it, as a woke bay, a distinction he happily dined out on through his mid-20s as he plotted his eventual exit from his uncle's firm. His firm. I take these awful, cringy Instagram model photos, he says. People responded to it. Here's this good-looking dude who also has some interesting opinions. At the time, the Young Turks was paying him 50 to 60 grand a year, he says. As his audience grew, he figured he could make more going it alone. He pivoted to Twitch and seized the means of production. In January 2020, Piker started streaming from his home full-time, generating revenue from advertisements and subscription fees from his most loyal viewers. And he started feeling more famous. I don't know why that's a that's a touch different, but he had gone from getting recognized at Politicon to millennials and Zoomers approaching him out and about in L.A. I'm a political commentator with like stands, he tells me. That's not normal at all. So. 50 to 60 count on internship right after graduating. No, motherfucker. That's over the course of like five years, you dummies. God damn it. Reading comprehension is great. I made 20,000. First of all, that internship was free. And then after that, my full-time job was $20,000. It was literally like, it was under the fucking, uh, uh, it was under, it was under minimum wage for California, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. In LA, I had to literally live out of a fucking, the kitchen of a frat house, shut the fuck up. I'm saying by the time I was leaving, by the time I left, I was making, uh, uh, I think 50 grand. It, it, it was 20 and then it was like 35 plus, uh, commissions. And then it was like, by the time uh, last year it was like my last year there was 60. Like. You guys remember the fucking famous Charlie Kirk uh, video? Anyway. Yeah, I got fucking money back from the government, dude. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, when Charlie screamed, I live like a capitalist every day, Jank. How did you survive on 60K in LA? I mean, you make do, man. You fucking make do. I was fortunate because I had a paid-for car. Um, I I was fortunate because, like, I had, uh, like, a job, a second job that I had that provided me free room and board the first year. And I had roommates. You know what I mean? I just, like, fucking... I had roommates. I would go and get, uh, like, near expiration date chicken, manager special, as I called it. We called it, Will and I both called it that, actually. At, um, yeah, I mean, 60K is definitely doable in Los Angeles. 20K was not. Yeah, you just have to budget well. Yeah. Anyway, his young admirers are why Piker frequently refers to his stream as a daycare. He's live from 11 a.m. to the early evening, cultivating the minds of teens, college students, and burned out 20-somethings around the world. Piker is aware he possesses a rare opportunity to radicalize the youth. As the boomer, he jokes at the start of his stream on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, I want to show you guys how the world changed and how psychotic Americans behaved before shuffling through a makeshift slideshow documenting the lowlights of those pro early Bush years. In 2019, he was briefly banned from Twitch and feuded with Representative Dan Crenshaw for saying America deserved 9-11 during a stream. Obviously, I don't support terrorism, Piker tweeted in a response to Crenshaw. After all, I'm criticizing the American government for supporting terrorism, both leading up to and post 9-11. I realize I use imprecise language that easily got weaponized by the right, but spare me your moral grandstanding. Freedom Fries, WMDs, and the murder of Balber Singh Saudi are all mentioned. Many of the most prominent young pundits online, like Candace Owens, Dave Rubin, and Tim Pool, skew right. Maybe, argues Piker, his success will open the door for other young leftists tipping the scales of the algorithm. I think the way I see the world is the correct way. And I think there are plenty of people who feel exactly like I do. But they don't have the tools to recognize that. I try to help them develop those tools, he says. I love shitposting, I love having fun, but I take it seriously as well. Of course, that brings us back to the house and the reality that, more Pike, uh, that the more Piker's brand grows, the more prosperous he will become. 
For a select group of popular leftists, business is booming. Chapo Trap House, the podcast is responsible for some of the basic grammar of the movement, rakes in nearly $2 million a year on Patreon. Ocasio-Cortez recently came under fire for her appearance at the Met Gala, wearing a dress printed with the words, Tax the Rich. Towards the end of our conversation, Piker mentions that he was recently in contact with a network that wanted him as a host. He passed on the opportunity, but it conjured images of his Twitch persona sanded down to fit the contours of commercial television. Nobody knows how to be a famous socialist, same as it ever was. I asked Piker about the AOC dress. Does he see any parallels between her position and his? Would he accept the invitation? Hell, would he have shown up in a protest outfit? I think the Met Gala is a disgusting, gluttonous exercise, and if given the opportunity to go, I'd do it in a fucking heartbeat, he replies. I'm sorry, everyone would. Why wouldn't you want to go hang out with Frank Ocean? They're not going to the fucking Davos Summit. He allows that those with real power, such as elected officials, should be held to a higher standard than a jacked Twitch streamer. Still, I get the sense he has grown tired of the left eating his own. It's time to get back to work. His Twitch chat is already percolating on the screen behind him. His loyal audience is filtering in. That's you guys. Wondering why he's late. He retrieves an iced coffee from his fridge, elevates his desk to its standing position. Today, we'll be talking about American war crimes, CIA subterfuge, and the California recall. All those nervy questions about real estate valuations, sartorial choices, the ethical maneuvering necessary for a socialist in a capitalist world will fade away. The cameras are rolling. The tabs are filling up on the Chrome browser. And Assam Piker is at peace on the right side of history. Nobody in the world can convince him otherwise. Maybe it really is that simple. That last part is actually really, this part is one of the best things that anyone's ever written about me because it's so fucking true. Um, not like the mini fridge or the mini tabs open, but this right here, like this is true. This is the most true thing ever. This stream, while it's still a job for me, right? It's still my work. It's still how I make my living. And it's, uh, I'm profoundly, uh, privileged and profoundly fortunate. Uh, something I talk about regularly. Okay. But it's also, a, an avenue for me to escape. Like it is literally like escapism. It provides, that's why I'm, I'm so structured. And that's why I always like to make sure that I'm, you know, live at the same time and, you know, doing a, a steady, doing a steady flow of content and covering the news and having this regimen in my life because I always, I, I, I'm, all, I'm able to escape the, the monotony and all the, all the things that are happening in my life on the, in the background when I'm here, when I'm doing this and I don't have to think about all this other stuff that's going on. Um, whether it's like fucking termites or some shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to think about any of that. I just have to think about streaming and I love doing that. I, I, the, this is, I, I'm so fortunate, you know? So. I wonder if they thought the headline they post for the articles to draw people in. Yeah. 100%. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>